I really enjoy worshiping God through music. Um, I play guitar a little bit. I'm like a campfire level guitarist, um, but it doesn't stop me from playing worship music just at home with, with me and Rebecca. Um, but I just love listening to worship music as well. Um, and I think we're very fortunate with uh, how much great music is out there, not just in terms of uh, how it sounds, but the contents of what's in those songs. And I find that uh, when I'm feeling that hope can begin to be lost, that uh, turning to uh, worship through music uh, can often restore those feelings. Another way that I, I find I can renew those feelings of hope is just through the relationships that I have here at Forest Brook, um, both with some very close friends that are within my own age group, but also at Forest Brook, I appreciate the intergenerational relationships that we have and the way that I can look to um, the more uh, mature subset of the population um, and uh, see them as, as friends and sources of uh, encouragement and hope. Jesus, in Hebrews where it said, I'll never leave you or forsake you. That always brings me back to that point of reset or replenishing the, the energy loss because I don't have to find a place to kneel and pray. I can pray in whatever position I am, wherever I'm at. And that's one of the things I, I practice. I try to practice His presence when I find myself in a, in a place like that because it's natural to, to, to come to that place where to feel like hope is lost. Invariably, might not be instantaneous, but there will be change and the assurance will come back. And I'm grateful for that. Well, you know, I've, I've had my doubts and, and lack of feeling and such, but I pray. And if things go wrong, I ask others to pray. And I seek the fellowship of other Christians. And small group is very important to me because small groups is where you get that care, that encouragement and uplifting in, in times like that or in other people's lives, you can then be that hope to them. Let me start by saying that I am not a skilled baker, but I can make a mean banana bread. It is a number one comfort food for me, especially if you add chocolate chips. It just doesn't fail to deliver. Sometimes when something sad or difficult happens to me or to someone I love, and I'm not sure what I can do to fix it or to help, or more likely when there's actually nothing I can do to fix it or to help, I've been known to make banana bread. It's warm and delicious and baked with care for sure, but I figured out a couple years ago what really makes this practice of mine so special. The key ingredient is rotten fruit. Maybe you're like me and you store far too many overripe bananas in your freezer at any given time, not because you're a planner, but because they got too soft or bruised or forgotten out on the counter. So you just throw them in the freezer. And when you defrost those suckers, they are mushy and gross. But I am told that these bananas are actually the very best candidates for baking. And there it is. It's the redemption of overripe bananas. It's the upside down kingdom. It's the inclusion of things that are forgotten or overlooked or long past their prime. The acknowledgement of their value and worth. It's the rotten reality with the promise of renewal where it's least expected. Kate Bowler, the author of There's No Cure for Being Human, talks about our funny relationship with the word hope. She rightly points out that the need for hope itself acknowledges the very not-enoughness of our lives. She encourages us to have compassion for our realities and just call the tough stuff what it is. So I want to echo that today. We wouldn't need hope if things were perfect. We wouldn't even be having this conversation. So when hope seems lost, when things are just not enough, we can remember the anchor of our souls, Jesus and his kingdom. And maybe we can make banana bread. In a small way, maybe that could be us participating in hope this week. So I invite you to bake with overripe bananas or repurpose or upcycle 
take something old or rotten or forgotten or broken and make it into something new or different that makes someone smile or that tastes delicious or that brings comfort. And as you do, ask God for more everyday invitations to participate in bringing the hope of the kingdom right here to your family, your friends, your neighbors, your coworkers, and right in your own heart.